my graduates from my school being Forbes. Bag drop. Bag drop. <laughs> a mic drop. Bag drop. Bag drop. All right, guys, welcome back. We in our LA run. Yeah. And um, yeah, this is our first away game. Yeah. We had seven consecutive home games. <laughs> <laughs> We're breaking the street. <laughs> We're breaking the Bro, street. The EYL house is, is waiting for us. That's a fact. <laughs> so we couldn't come to LA without visiting the mayor. B. Diddy. <laughs> Officially. B. Diddy run the city. That's right. That's a fact. Nobody go off like B. Diddy. <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you're a fan of Earning Your Leisure, you follow us, you know that we not only are huge sports fans, but I used to play ball. We'll talk about that. <laughs> Yo, that's uh, like 17 uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got a court. I, 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 you got a court. You got So you know that this is an epic conversation, man. Not only from the basketball perspective, but what he's doing off the court, to me, is actually even more impressive than what you have done on the court. Entrepreneur, uh, film producer. Actor. Rapper. Yeah, I mean, I ain't the rapper. I like created the rapper. Bart Oatmeal. Bart Oatmeal. That's a fact. <laughs> sound, it's, it's, it sounds good too. Are you fucking with it? I'm fucking with that. That's what's up, man. Yeah, yeah. Sports, sports analyst. All of it, we keep going, going. But first of all, thank you for having us. Thank Appreciate you. Bro. Appreciate you being here. Uh, thanks for having me on your show. <laughs> here in my spot. <laughs> yeah, that's a fact, man. So let's get into this conversation. But before I start, I got to, because like growing up, like, you know, used to read slam magazines and all mm. that and like coming from New York, like, you know, a lot of the influencers were from New York, but I will never forget, I don't even know if you remember this, but you was in a drop top. We was going to UCLA. It was yeah. like a classic photo shoot. You was in the drop top. And it was something like LA Savior, or King of LA, or something like that. And I was just seeing palm trees. And I'm like, yo, I gotta go to LA. Like it just looks so <laughs> beautiful. Like, you know what I'm saying? And then just watching your career from UCLA to the league. So coming in the league, out of L.A. How was it? How was it growing up in L.A. and being a man in L.A.? It was uh, it was weird, man, because, like, you know, I come from the east side, and I would say up until UCLA, everything I was seeing was all, like, on a first-hand experience. You know what I mean? But I'm still rooted in the east side. East, you know L east L.A.? Yeah, South Central. Okay, South Central. East of the 110. Okay. Mm. So it's like Watts, you know, we borderline South Central Watts. People think I'm from Compton, but I'm not from Compton. I'm from South Central. Borderline Watts, East Side of the 110. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, straight, you know, everybody like, man, niggas from Compton. He from Inglewood. It's like, nah, go everywhere. You know what I mean? And I kind of feel like this whole city raised me, but I'm like, Damn near from like a five block with the school. Luckily, we had a school there. Like that is my neighborhood. Yeah, we we. I mean, in the mid or well, early two thousands, we saw you a game, and so it was like, oh, you must be from Compton because that you like. We grew up together. We played ball together. He's nice. I'm like, all right, this is that's the confusion. So you're like just king of all territories in LA. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm a game, of, game, <laughs> game of Thrones. <laughs> I'm, a visitor, I'm a member. I'm a member and a visitor. You know what I mean? I'm everybody's cousin, cousin or relative, depending on uh, you know which color. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. right. So I can honestly say that, like, you know, when I became my own agent, and then I rock with my, you know, my college teammate, who was my agent, Rico Hines, who was working me out. We was doing our own little thing, you know what I mean? Like, I was able to make money for myself, mm -hmm. you know, but I don't think that I've made more uh, off the court. Than <laughs> not I, yet. Only, I not like yet. to see that shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, let's talk about that uh, as far as being your own agent. When did you, when did you make that switch to become your own agent? Uh, I think I was 21. I was 21. It was my third year. We were on our way to Orlando uh, to play Tracy McGrady. I think it was like game three. And uh, no, we was coming back from game three. I had a triple double, and everybody on the team was like, Hey, nigga, you gonna get the max? Hey, you don't even need the agent, like, keep that money for yourself. So I was like, All right, cool. So I'm just in the bus, you know, I'm on the bus just listening. Then when we beat Orlando, they was just like, All the vets was just like, Yo, like, you next in line. They was just like, They started negotiating my contract, 
as I'm sitting right here, like listening, yeah. like, nah, you gonna get this. Nah, but you should be, you know, and they was telling me all the possibilities because you got, you know, I listened to my vets, you know, the David Wesley's, the Stacey Augment, uh, Eldon Campbell, PJ Brown. They was all just talking about, you know, like what I would get and what I would potentially get. And uh, I never forget Eddie Jones, you know, and Derek Coleman. They was just like, yo, bro, you know, you don't need an agent. You know, I got my lawyer. They was fly with him. You know, I just got a lawyer do a deal, you know, pay him like that. Da, da, da. So that always stuck in the back of my mind. So when the playoffs was over, I was like, yo, time for me to uh, take this. What is the what is the number if I max out? What is 4% of that? Yeah. All right, I need to, like, I'm going to gamble this on my family, trying to build up my, my community. You know what I mean? Yeah. Trying to, like, take this money and heal like a part of me you know what i mean that is like i'm gonna need to like do some like you know what i mean some maintenance yeah. uh on myself and just on my past you know what i mean so i rather invested in my family my friends and you know hopefully they can get out or get in a space where they can be comfortable enough where everybody you know can see a different space you know yeah so at 21 that's a pretty big decision I'm wondering now, if, is that the start of your entrepreneurial spirit? Because you took that venture on yourself and said, I'm betting on myself. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can do this. Let me try it in some other avenues as well. Yeah, I think everything that I tried, it was just like, oh, was, I, I'm an idea person. You know what I mean? And so I like to think about ideas and shit and what I bring to the table. So when I did take that leap, it just kind of happened. Like vitamin water came. And it was really, I was supposed to go to Sprite. And my homeboy was leaving Sprite to go to Vitamin Water. I was like, man, don't go there, dog. That shit ain't gonna be no good, dog. <laughs> he was like, no, the founders are great. Uh, it's gonna be a great product. They just started, you know, and he, he started telling me about how, you know, building a beverage company and like just the formulas and they working on the formula. And then I got a chance to meet the founders, right? And with that, it was like, well, shit, I don't want to be at Sprite because if I go to Sprite, they gonna realize I ain't got no agent. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. Sprite ain't gonna do nothing but like throw me in a commercial if you know what I mean. Like yeah. I ain't really getting no commercials. Like let's call it Spade a Spade. I may get some like uh, Baron Davis posters, <laughs> and, uh, Kruger or some shit like that. You know what I mean? So I was just like, fuck it. I just let me go with you so I can learn marketing. And I start pitching him on like, yeah, bro, I don't even need the money. Just like, you know, I was trying to figure out creative ways to like be a part of the vitamin water team so I could learn how to market. And then if they got big enough at the time, it was like Gatorade Powerade. So I was like, yo, if they get big enough for Powerade, like I want to shoot a commercial. You know yeah. what I mean? I'd rather direct a commercial than like be in a commercial. So let me try and get all these NBA dudes and people to like fuck with the brand. And that's how I got turned on the vitamin water. And then the Reebok deal, uh, I was at Nike and... Yeah, you in that legendary commercial. Yeah. yeah. Like, we can't, like, the, the dribble... Yeah, the dribble People shit <laughs> like that. that was, the Nike legendary. thing was crazy because, you know, I was always a Nike athlete. Even in college, uh, UCLA was Reebok, and I wore Nikes. At UCLA? God, what? How'd that work? They LA let you, they you do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> Can that stop me, bro? Like, yeah. did, did, like, did, and, I'll, I'll, and I'll be like, yo, and where the contract, homie? Where is the contract that I signed and say I got to wear these Reeboks? So it was a whole little So let, let, let's talk about that because college sports is a big, big billion dollar industry. Shoe companies play a major part. Mm -hmm. Adidas, Reebok, really Adidas and Nike, but Reebok is involved too sometimes. So being that your school was one brand, you wore another brand. Did the coach come to you? Did they put pressure on the school or they okay, just let man, you? It was a whole bunch of shit. <laughs> you got to ask Earl Watson and Rico. They like, they know, I can't remember. <laughs> but like, it was always some shit because they had, and then I had to like, because I, we we really wanted the Iversons mm. and they weren't coming off the Iversons. So I was like, bro, we ain't fly. Like, I'm not just going to be wearing just like, these don't feel good. good. Don't yeah. wear my Nikes. And so I had to put tape on the Nike. So if you go and watch some of the UCLA games, you'll see I got tape on my shoes. Number five at UCLA. You know what I mean? And uh, I had on Nikes. That's crazy. So they just like made a whole thing. And then uh, crazy enough, I run into Iverson because we used to hang out at the club because we couldn't get in. So we used to be parking lot pimping. 
Iverson, Iverson come to the club. He, we finally get in with AI. And then he like, man, what's up, man? I love y'all, dog. I was like, man. He was like, what, what can I do for y'all? He was like, man, we just want to wear the Iversons, yo. <laughs> Next thing you know, Reebok sent us the Iversons and we was playing in Iversons. So let's talk about this vitamin water situation. Uh, a lot of people know 50 Cent story with vitamin water, but they might not have known your involvement. So can you break that down? You were an investor in vitamin water? Yeah, I invest. So you got, you got equity. Yeah, so I, it was a marketing deal. And it was like the first of its kind because they said, well, we can't pay you with Sprite can. And I was like, well, what can you pay? And it was like, well, we can only pay this. And I was like, well, shit, that ain't no money. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I'm just learning about tax. So I said, how can I avoid, you know what I mean? Like taxes. I don't know. I, that's just what I was thinking. And yeah. I was like, yo, let me just like, give me that deal in equity. So I don't even want I don't even want any money from you. You know yeah. what I mean? Because I know you don't have a lot of money to spend on marketing. Just give me that in equity and then let me see if I can like help you like extend the brand and like put it in a movie or this and that. And and that's what happened. So for me, it gave me an opportunity to like link with game and, le you know, start making movies and being around the music space. And I was always working out. So I always have vitamin water, you know, with me. So yeah. it was almost like the kind of like an ambassador deal, but you know, I was just inside like, yo bro, vitamin water. And when they got money, I would go tell people like, yo bro, vitamin water got money. They get your refrigerator on it, you know what I mean? <laughs> because I start seeing the numbers yeah. and the equity of, of what my equity, what that meant, I start seeing that shit going up. Yeah, so that's, cr that's crazy. Cause the irony of it all is that you didn't do the deal with Sprite, but Coca-Cola buys vitamin water. Right. Which actually owns Sprite. Right. And, but it was good to see that, you know, I always say, say that to say this. It was good to see because before Coca-Cola bought them, another company came in and bought it. And so you got your first distribution. Mm. Oh, okay. Like that first check, you know, when Tata, I think, invested at like 300 million for a certain percentage. Like we got a check, bro. And that check was like, Goddamn, like, uh, you know what I mean? That's like a, that's a nice a NBA contract. Like, not a yeah. contract, but a year's salary for, yeah. like, you know, a potential all-star. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, damn, dog. Like, and then when the um, Coca-Cola thing came, then it was just more on top of that. So yeah. it was just... I was like, yo, I need to do more shit like this, mm -hmm. right? This is the, this, this is, is the, long that's the real bad. Man, this is where it's at, homie. Did, so. did you, did you lose a little bit of passion for bowling when you saw like, I don't have to do this and be on somebody else's 82 game schedule. I could actually make a career doing this. Did your love for the game change a little bit? Nah, I used to, uh, you know, uh, I think words are powerful. I used to always tell my friends like, man, fuck that. I'm gonna retire at 30. <laughs> Take a couple of years off, you know what I mean? Yeah. Get my business right and then come back because I don't want to fuck my body up. Um, but I just think that I was just hustling. You know what I mean? I think for me, like, I did not have a timetable, right? So NBA career, like, I was happy to make it to the NBA. So there's an NBA career and then there's a life career. Mm -hmm. And I'm from L.A., you know what I mean? So a lot of like just like being in the NBA was like a vacation, you know, it was like a vacation and shit like that. And it was like the best life you can live. But like the life, you know what I mean? Like kept feeling like, well, I see 25. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Even like, in the league, you felt like that? Hell yeah, bro. You yeah. target. Hell yeah. Because back then in the league, you know, it was like it, it wasn't. You know, we what we weren't we weren't like fashion icons or content dudes or you couldn't put out an album. You know what I mean? Yeah. We were we were uh, we were look, viewed a little different. And then remembering that era, you know, that's like that's like the explosion of hip hop when hip hop really meets the NBA and brands and they start exploiting the culture, you know what I mean? Or tapping in and, mm. and, and investing into the culture. So you had this energy of like, everybody got tattoos, everybody got braids, everybody got chains, everybody trying to, you know, people start to like- yeah. Be rappers, they look like rappers. Yeah, start yeah. to live out like their identity, you know what I mean? And, and start representing more 
of where they came from. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so at the same time, just the same thing like these rap, you know, these young kids is rapping, you know, you become a target. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because now, like, your riches separate you from everybody. From everybody, yeah. bro. You know what I mean? But not like, yo, who you are and shit like that, but it's just people cannot, they, they, they see you here, you yeah. know what I mean? But when they see you there, it's like, it creates like an yeah. animosity, Jealousy. you know what yeah. I mean? Or, or, uh, uh, I call it, uh, attention. Yeah. You know I'm, what I mean? Looking at that time, obviously now there's so many players from LA. It's like, that's the awesome. Yeah, back so, then it wasn't. I'm thinking it like, was, who, yeah. who is your counterpart from this city that they can even you can lean on, right? Like Russ had James Harden, Paul George, and Kawhi. Also, yeah, Tayshawn, Tayshawn Prince, Tayshawn, Prince. Tayshawn. But you know, Tay he had acquired Tay from Compton, but Tay one of my best friends. So, you know, like for me, it was just like you know, me and Tay just we always just hoop. Like yeah. the, the thing about like what I was trying to do was like, and maybe like. And people say I am like this now. I try and do too much, but I was trying to hoop. I was trying to fuck with the hood. I was trying to fix my family. You know what I mean? And I was trying to show LA dudes that, yo, homie, like you don't have to change who you are. I don't give a fuck if you're a crip or a blood. You know what I mean? Like we are hoopers. You know what I mean? And so even like some of the hardest gangbangers in LA you know, used to be some of the best hoopers, right? Mm-hmm. So they legendary in the street, legendary in high school. And, and and my whole shit was like, man, I want, I want, I'm a part of them. Mm-hmm. We need to like peel the cap off of this because over here in the league, they think we saw, you know what I mean? So it's like this big misperception of LA. Oh my God. It was like Holly, Hollywood. It was, it- it was Showtime. Bro, you know, it's like Showtime, <laughs> showtime and then showtime, you only got the Lakers, <laughs> yeah. and then the Clippers at the time, they didn't really, like, like matter that much until Q Rich and, and, that and, and D Miles, they Lamar changed Odom. it. Lamar yeah, Odom, Lamar yeah. Odom, they kind of they changed it because they, they tapped into L.A. too. Yeah. You know what I mean? So big shout out to Q Rich and, and D Miles because they was going to the high school games because they were still in high school, really. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they was messing with like the Trevor Reeses, you know, uh, they was hanging out with uh, Bobby Browns and you know what I mean? People like that. That that was like going to uh, Darrell Rice games. They going to all the dope high school dudes, and so that that kind of like gave the high school dudes like, oh shit, like mm-hmm. like this dude are like eight, yeah. two years older than me. So that by them playing for the Clippers being there, that was lit. And then for me, it was just like every time I came home, it was just like, all right, I gotta show these fools the way. Oh, we got a pro- I got a private plane. We all going. Mm. I'm going to New York playing a rucker. 200 people we going you know what i mean and most of them were hoopers mm-hmm. right are people in the culture who would never ever think about playing a record think about going to new york and they needed to they needed to be in that intensity and realize that you know like we can bring we can bring the good shit we can bring all the good shit about LA and spread around this country, you know what I mean? So yeah. people can like tap into well, what we're doing. Perfect segue, because um, you also are a film producer, mm-hmm. and um, you have a couple documentaries I want to talk about, but one, uh, Crips and Bloods, mm-hmm. is, what's, is that the name of it? Made in America, Crips and Bloods. Made in America, America, Crips and Bloods, yeah. So talk about that, and um, like LA, I, every time I come to LA, it's always interesting city for me, mm-hmm. because I feel like, because it's two cities in one city. Yeah. And because um, obviously, you know, the glitz, the glamour, you run into Stevie Wonder just randomly. Like, it's <laughs> magical stuff. Like, it just flies yeah. out the sky. Like, every, even, like, good things always happen for us when we're in L.A. But you know the other side of L.A. But it's like you're going through neighborhoods, and the neighborhoods don't even really look that bad. Right. They look like a middle-class neighborhood. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's a very interesting dynamic. So why was it important for you to tell that story to, to the world? Um... I think it was just a part, it was like a part of my life that I had to put a button on, Mm. you know what I mean? And I could not figure out how to, how to explain the shit, you know what I mean? Mm. And so it was more so like, 
let them like if I can give them the light to explain themselves from a first person perspective, then when you get to the big screen, they'll see themselves. They'll be able to hear themselves. It's like therapy, yo. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And all these, you know, uh, and then shout out to Ball for Bastards of the Party. You know what I mean? Because like that was that was the one before ours that kind of kicked the door open. You know what I mean? And it was Bone's perspective, so that was just inspiring to be like, all right, I wanted to link with Stacey Peralta, who had did Dogtown Z Boys. Mm -hmm. And so that was like, let's tell it in a format of like, this is the history of LA. You know what I mean? Here's Hollywood. Here's this community. Is it being properly served, right? Mm -hmm. And then here's where we were, right? So I learned about the history of like, my OGs and grandfather and you know people like that just being here and it we didn't start out like that right 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 you know right. what I mean I, I had that conversation the other day it was about the how things were zoned how the, the railroad was built yep. it was very intentional to, to make sure that people stayed in one place absolutely yeah, yeah. Red, redlining yeah red yeah and uh I just came back um shooting a show called Small Business Revolution uh, season six uh, with Deluxe and Amanda Brinkman, and we went to Minnesota. So I was there doing the George Floyd verdict. I was there doing the Dante Wright funeral just in the city. But same thing. They built this big ass freeway in the middle of the most thriving black community. You know what I mean? And so when I'm watching this gang doc, it was like, I want us to see that, like, yo, one, this shit just didn't happen and appear and motherfucker, you didn't wake up with a gun and some dope. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like we were actually, like, <clears throat> on clubs. Earners, the year is almost halfway over. Do not miss this opportunity to scale to the next level. EYL University is the biggest institution when it comes to business online, period. We have ramped up things in 2021 with over 20 infinity groups, including our breakout crypto club, which is fastly becoming one of the top online communities for cryptocurrency information. It also includes MG The Mortgage Guy's Home Buyer's Blueprint Volume 1. It also includes monthly financial planning calls with yours truly. It also includes our book club, our movie club, access to our private Facebook group with over 6,000 members, access to over 100 past webinars, and access to weekly webinars from industry experts. All that and more for a limited offer of 60% off. That's right, 60% off of the annual tuition. Go to EYLUniversity.com right now and become an earner. We had infrastructure, mm -hmm. we had places to go, we had clubs, like it was different. And when they red line, railroads, freeways, all that shit is divisive. Yeah, we saw that in Chicago too. Same way the city was built from the north side to the south side. Um, another documentary that you did, glad you said that you told the history, especially that's a big part of mm -hmm. LA inner city culture is, is gangs, but you did a Drew Lee documentary too to tell the history of Ball. Yeah. So obviously the inspiration, you're playing basketball, but how did that process go when you were documenting that? Uh, the Drew has just been a big part of my life. Uh, I first played in the Drew, I think I was like 13 years old and it was like a night game so it's like the drew as adults mm -hmm. you know i got to see that and being a part of that and dino smiley who he met in the community right and what like a dino smiley basketball camp shirt meant for a kid for that summer you know what i mean it's like you're getting some free shit you're getting basketball skills and you have a, a time of your life and you're gonna feel safe mm -hmm. and so dino was always like you know that guy and so you know, for me, it, it just made sense. Like, and I wanted to tell a bigger story, but like, that was like my first time doing a documentary, so mm -hmm. I didn't really know what I was doing. But I wanted to tell the story of the little engine that could, yeah. right? And if you serve your community, if you just stay the course, if you just stick to it and you got the right values and the right principles, you know, like that, that seed is gonna grow. You know what I mean? And and having the Drew, you know, now the Drew is bigger in a bigger facility, but yeah. like <clears throat> never be able to capture that yeah. essence. And so wanting to tell the story of just LA basketball as it pertained to the Drew as a safe haven in the hood. Yeah. Right. And like you can have like there are incredible people 
in the hood. It's not just gangs and drugs. So you go with the gang documentary to show like what, all right, this is what you guys think you see and what, what you think you know. But then in the Drew, it's some of these gang members, right? come to this park, right, to make sure that these kids can hoop. And you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like you just got to start peeling off the layers, right, to really get, you know, to the essence of L.A. And so from a content perspective, you know, I think that's what I want to do for L.A. and really just keep telling L.A. stories. Yeah, no, nah, you're a true man of the people because the first time we met him, we didn't actually meet him. We were supposed to meet him. Shout out to my brother, Chris Gotti. You was in Dykeman. Okay. You was, was on the court on Dykeman. Um, that shit was lit, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, they said, you want to go to the Skybox? I was like, hell yeah, they had the Skybox. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. man, that was crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, can, can we can we cross the court? They were like, nah, it's kind of busy right now. They, banging, <laughs> they was banging on New York. They banging yeah. on the side. <laughs> <laughs> Dope, bro. Dykeman, um, how you compare Dykeman to the Drew League? It's not, it, it's two different things. Like, you gotta do both. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, a, like you gonna rock in the Drew, that's gonna be a different feel. That's a different feel. Like, a different type of it's gonna be more similar to a run. You know what I mean? That you would play. You know, that's like your prep run. Mm -hmm. Dykeman is like your showcase. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Three fourths of a court. <laughs> Three fourths of a court. Dudes running on the court. Yeah, smoking. Dudes on the uh, dudes on the sidelines smoking cigarettes, coaching. The dudes can't even coach. You know what I mean? All, uh, all your head comes do is talk shit to the other coach. You know what on the games as it's going. The Drew got that, but you know we got you know it's it's a lot of a little like, more structure. structure, more structure, it's more structure. More, like the Drew, the Drew. It's I like would a pro say like pro is pro am. Yeah, right. Yeah. And Dyke is like showcase pro like it's pro-am street ball yeah you know what i mean and like they should both exist they should both be live streamed and like exist on their own and, and more forms of that because it's just like it's giving dudes a chance to like heal mm -hmm. you know what i mean imagine all them dudes at Dykeman, you were like, man, that dude is a stick-up kid, but he, he you, yeah. know, you know, but it's like, it, it give people a chance to, basketball give people a chance to be normal. No, nah, and even the fans, it's like, it's giving them, they go there, they talk, they argue, and da da da, -da but it's like, that's their outlet. Yep. That's their entertainment. That's mm -hmm. their, you know what I'm saying? As opposed yeah, to just standing on the corner, just, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I feel like, there's, where's the other place that they can go that they're going to see a They can't get into the Knicks game. Right. They can't get into a Clippers game or, no, you know what I'm saying, a Lakers sure. game. They, that's, their, that's, that's their Lakers game right there. Yeah, you know that's saying? why I wanted to go to the Rucker, man. That's like when I got in the league, it was just like, I got to go to the Rucker. One, because it, it was just this East Coast west coast beef yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what i mean and then it was this east coast west coast bias when it came to who like west coast dudes was soft <laughs> you know what i mean i'm like yeah Yo, it's really? a landslide now but that's why i wanted to go to <laughs> rucker and play in the rucker because you know i wanted i wanted i wanted that new york energy yeah. that fade you know what i mean and i just no bullshit i just popped up in the park like the night before you know what I mean? I was shooting, and uh, I'll never forget, it was Chris. Chris Gotti was like, yo, bro. I think Chris Gotti took me. You played for Murder, Inc., right? Uh, yep. Yeah, shout out to Chris. But some uh, people heard, like, I was in the park the night before. They was like, yo, you was in the park by yourself. Bro. You all right? Like, you cool? I'm like, yeah, man. Chris Gotti got me, and then I came with Murder, Inc., and we shut it down. And when I when I played in the record the first time, that shit was just so crazy. You know what I mean? And I was like, yo. I have to bring all my little homies in LA <laughs> back. Like I kept talking about it, but it was just, it was nothing I can talk about. It was like these dudes, if they experience this, they all go into the league. Mm. You know what I mean? And so the next year, man, we loaded up the planes, we loaded up the buses. And like, that's where I wanted to spend my money. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give them that experience. So these dudes can get that experience knowing that, like, they're going to be in the league, too. And once I'm an OG, they're going to be young. You how they, how they, how they like it? How they appreciate it? You got to ask them. I mean, they was any, any of those guys that you brought actually go to the league? Uh, yeah, Pooh, Bobby Brown. Uh, 
I don't know. It was so many people, bro. That's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, Marcus Williams was there. Okay, that's was my guy. That he went to, to UConn. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He still he played. Like, I think he was the MVP of the Jewel a few times. Yeah, shout out to him. I don't know if Trev went. Who else? It was some other people. Oh, you brought the you brought the All Star team. Yeah, Dijon Thompson. Uh huh. Yeah. No, I just brought them to come. Like, uh, <laughs> I had Gang Kenny Bruner, like D'Angelo Collins, Ray Young. Ray Young, UCLA. Mm -hmm. Got Ray Young with me. <laughs> he's a, he's a, um, another supporter too. Jerry Dupree. Yeah. Uh, he like a street ball legend, but I had brought like a street ball team too. You know, around games, so we can like just you know, in case. With gang Gilbert came, Gil, but Gil, you know, Gil is on his own dime. You know, Gil got got major cash. Let me ask you this, um, Trilla, um, you are investing in that as well, right? Mm -hmm. We recently heard about this, obviously with Swiss and Timberland, yeah, with Versus, of course. Obviously, everybody's heard about that situation. I don't think a lot of people was familiar. I wasn't familiar with the app before that, but were you involved with that before the Versus situation? Uh, as an investor, yeah, yeah. So what made you what made you get into that? What made me invest in Triller? Yeah. Oh man, you know I think uh, you know one is a platform. I felt like uh, you know with all the hoop hoopla and the hype around TikTok, you know, and TikTok is a great great platform, a great tool. But I felt like Triller had the opportunity to do other things to separate itself and. You know, when the opportunity presented itself, it's just like, you know, you look at the team, you look at the opportunity, the opportunity for growth, and it's like, all right, I like to put my money in a company that ultimately is going to invest in the people in, in my community, in my culture. And so, you know, just uh, proud of them for doing that, doing the fight, you know, getting verses. They got yeah, yeah, some Mike Tyson. stuff. Yeah. Mike Tyson fight, too. Yeah, yeah. That was on. That was on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they got some other stuff and like, uh, and then we working on some stuff as well, you know. So it's like good to be invested in a platform that's invested in culture. So do they approach you or you approach like how? Like when you wanted to be involved with it, you already had a connection with them or? Oh man, I can't remember. Uh, no, I, <laughs> just, just, a lot kidding, of just kidding. Uh, shout out to uh, Mike Lou. Uh, I got introduced to Mike, and you know we just hit it off. And I just saw his vision and what he was trying to do. And, you know, it was a few other people. Like, I, I, I say the greatest leaders are the best followers. You know what I mean? And sometimes, and for me, I love to follow when it comes to, like, investing. You know, there's sm a lot of smart people out here. I'm not the smartest one. You know what I mean? And people make good picks, got good ideas, and say things. So I just try to, like, Trying to see what everybody else see. Yeah, so, so getting into investments was that something naturally that you did, or was it somebody that introduced you? Because I know a lot of NBA players, even now, like they have the tech conference, which is like oh, that's pretty dope for, yeah. for the, the new age guys. But you weren't from that that generation where they, that was happening. It, was there a trip that you took to like Silicon Valley or networking? It was just like who'd you meet? Nah, man. See, you know that's the beauty of being your own agent, is you're just like, hey, I want to build a tech company. Yeah. Like, you know what? <laughs> Since I represent you, I'm from my head, you know what I mean? Um, so, like, I, I, I say curiosity, you know what I'm saying? So, the, I, 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 the vitamin water thing was, like, I wouldn't say that it was, like, I mean, I did invest, but it wasn't, like, an investment. Like, I didn't look at it like an investment. I was looking at that, like, how do you build this marketing idea around an athlete? Right. What is the new mark? What is new marketing value? And then Reebok, it was like, how do you get Reebok to pay for the private planes and all this shit? You know what I mean? And pay for the lifestyle because that's what musicians was using record company money for. So I was like, I use that to like build up this BD cachet. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that was marketing. And then um, the investments, like that was just that's just a, that was just a whole different kind of like trajectory after like I built a couple tech tech companies. So I built a company called ibeatyou.com. I beat you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, check this out, it was a social media app based on competitions that you can do with your friends. So you wake up in the morning, you tag your friends, and it's like, yo, who got the flying sneaks? So you just like a bunch of people post and it was like voting. So it was like similar to like a challenge so mm. a platform based on challenges okay. and we had everything from karaoke limp sync 
to the cinnamon challenge to wastebasket uh, shooting. And like you look at now the evolution of TikTok, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're like, fuck, man. Like, <laughs> but this was before the phone. Yeah. You know, this was before the phone. We had a company called Scout Match that would take kids and take mid-major colleges. And, and, you know, at the time, people were just starting to record on their phones. And it was like, imagine if you can record all your games and then submit that you know, to a platform where college could recruit you mm. and colleges who don't have budgets could find a dope player, yeah. you know what I mean, to play in a conference. And so we tried that. We had team play, which was like uh, uh, mentors. Uh, what, 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 uh, I forget the tag, but it was um, it was like a mentorship program for kids. And it was taking like people like ourselves and a kid get to pick their favorite five and follow like mentors and so all mm -hmm. that I did all that and then I was like man fuck this I ain't no good <laughs> no, 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 did, did you have a video game uh, a mobile I did, game I did I did I did yeah we had a video game me Steve Nash I believe Rondo Brandon Jennings Candace Parker and for some odd reason uh Everybody got hurt. That I was like, yeah, everybody got like people were getting hurt. So when we were launching the game in the summer, like nobody had time to kind of like promote the game because they was coming back. Man, it was just you know the timing was bad. But I I still got the game. It was it buckets, playing. right? Getting buckets. Getting yeah. buckets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to bring it back. <laughs> Kai two. Did I pronounce that correctly? What's that? Organic coffee. Oh, Kitu. 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 Yeah, yeah. Kitu. Yeah. Super Messing coffee. up names left and right today. Super coffee. Yeah. Kitu. What's, this, what's the deal with that? Uh, just more a healthy alternative. You know what I mean? Uh, instead of sugar. Just thinking about, uh, I mean, one, it's it's super coffee. Uh, drink super coffee. What's super, what is super coffee? Super coffee is a keto coffee that basically is more of a protein coffee, give you energy, doesn't have any sugar, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's really good tasting, right? It has all the nutrients and all the coffee that you can get, but it's just not out of sugar. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, you spoke about uh, college students. But it's the guys. It's oh, yeah. their company. Their company. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And it's three brothers, you know. Uh, so you're, you're an investor in that as well? I'm an investor. So what So what, make, what do you look for? Because you, you invest in a lot of companies. Some work out. Some, that's just part of the game. What are you looking for? Because I'm sure people pitch you all the time. Like, I got this all company. The time. Like, what do you look for to say, okay, this is something I'm interested in? Or this is, I'm not interested in this? Uh, one, I have a good conversation with the founders to see like how well they know how passionate they are about what they are doing and is this something that they're gonna stick to for the long haul you know what I mean I think that's key and then to what is it what's the idea what's their knowledge base in that an idea subject matter three I start to like think about my ideas and if I'm hearing you know where they want to go and I'm thinking about you know ultimately I'm trying to see their vision right and a lot of times you know great entrepreneurs are you know head down all the time and just you know working to build it they're builders and sometimes they they have the vision and they just need somebody to like share in the vision mm. you know what I mean so they don't go crazy you know building things and so once we have that like aligned vision then I'm always like my dollars goes towards investing in people that I think I can help because mm -hmm. that's how I learned from vitamin water you know what I mean it's mm -hmm. like how can I invest but then also how, how can I put more people in to the company or get more people to invest or you know help market or brand it or promote it right and it has to be something that just, you know, one, aligns with our goals. And our goals is to, like, build a better ecosystem and make sure that black people got, you know, a piece of the action and a piece of the rock. Make sure we invest in black women, you know, women in general, women of color. Make sure that, you know, our portfolio of companies, you know, looks like, you know, what what people would say the minority of the world looks like. Mm. You know what I mean? And so we're not just focus on you know dollars yeah. right we're focused on you know i think this is my life trajectory is to make sure that we're building the right community right of us 
so we can raise it up a lo another level so that next generation can you know take it further yeah so like uh, you, you said that the mentorship piece the app which is pretty commendable uh and now you're talking about trying to change the trajectory of futures of lives and so is that the division for unrest because I, I, I read that it's a college savings app. UNES. UNES, I'm sorry. Not yeah. UNES. <laughs> Shotty got me tripping. Shotty got me tripping. <laughs> Throw it up in the air. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. man, y'all the way. Y'all the way. Y'all yeah, yeah. on my home yeah. turf. Yeah. 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 I never mess up names. Cali man. butt. It must have been a Cali butt. <laughs> it was butt. on the table. <laughs> <laughs> got a contact high. Yeah, nah, I, UNES, I'm sorry. Yeah, UNES. UNES, UNES is dope because, um, you know, I started thinking about, like, you know, 529s mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, um, you know, from the time that I was like 20 some, I start every year on a birthday saving money for my nieces and nephews before I had kids. Mm -hmm. And then when I had kids, I was like, damn, dude, like, I want to know what I'm doing for my kids. And even though I know that my kids have like the college, you know, taken care of, I still want to know. Right. So I set up a UNEST account and committed to like fifty dollars a month. Right. Mm -hmm. Just so I could see on my own, you know, the power of saving for your kid. Right. And so for me, it was like a, an opportunity to like to learn what financial literacy is by by doing it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I love UNEST one because it gives you the opportunity to you know, invest, have your family invest, it's college, it's gifted. And so it, ha it has the core components, right? And the offering, right, of commitment for, if I go back in time, right, to when I first started as a rookie, I'd have spent $3 million just buying, all, you know, everybody UNES accounts mm -hmm. that I came in contact with, and I'd have matched them, you know what I mean? Yeah. Shit, especially all the money that, let's say, we wasted on, you know, just bottles. hanging out and <laughs> blah, 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 and chains and low riders and shit like that. <laughs> Those could have all been UNES accounts, and it could have been motivation. So, you know, I'm constantly, you know, investing against the things that, you know, I felt like, damn, if I would have did that thin, you know, like South Central wouldn't be like it is, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And so that kind of leads me into these investments so I can now champion you, Ness, as, hey, start with $25. I'm right there with you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I can tell, you know, my sister or my cousin, start a UNES account. Now, birthday, we can all gift, you know what I mean? And it makes so much sense when we got kids and we got generations. It's like, how do we, how do we, uh, how do we pass wealth on? Yeah. Or just money. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's the key. Now, what you said was something that we talked about before as far as have like birthday parties for your kids and instead of giving them gifts and stuff like that, like you just have like a 529 account or, you know, a, a Utma account where it's like, all right. Yeah, but you get a UNES account, you can just <laughs> It's, 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 it's yeah, yeah, yeah. I sent it. No, you didn't. So yeah, now buy twenty nines and all that shit. You open up the UNES, you know, and I feel like I'm the spokesman for it right now. <laughs> but like that shit, that shit hella, hella lit because a birthday party happens. Everybody in the family know that they can give a hundred dollars, twenty five dollars, five dollars, something to that kid for their future. Because them toys ain't gonna mean shit. You know, in, in two months. Yeah, right, 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 right. So you're in the cannabis space with a soda company? I am. No? Yeah, drink can. <laughs> <laughs> drink can. Yeah, revolutionary. It's dope. That shit is delicious, bro. What's the deal with that? It's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> so it's cannabis, it's soda. It's, it's a tonic. It's a uh, cannabis infused TAC tonic. And uh, man, this shit is delicious, dude. Lime, jalapeno, Mike lime. I got some in here. Oh, yeah, we're going to taste it. Well, Mike's going to taste it after. <laughs> <laughs> but I always say it's for that, you know, for that slow fade, that smooth fade. Yeah. Um, and, you know, a lot of people smoke, you know, and smoking is, you know, not always the most comfortable thing for other people if it's a tight room or the smell. And, you know, for me, like, you know, I smoke weed, you know, and... If I don't want to, if I'm going to a meeting, 
You know, I mean? smell like I'm a going patch. like I'm <laughs> going out to dinner. I don't want to come to the table, you know, smell like, like a, loud a chimney. Yeah, yeah I don't know, bro, because because you know how people are. They be yeah. like, ooh. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh okay, okay, I know what you want. It's like, man, I don't even want to deal with that shit. <laughs> so you really envision it being an alcohol alternative? It is, I think, you yeah. know, for me. Or, you, I mean, it's, it can be an alcohol alternative, and you can mix it. You know, it, it. I've been just using it. Like, sometimes I get a hangover, and it's like, yo, you know, you don't want to smoke. You just drink the, drink the can. You be chilling for the whole day. You know, uh, drink can. It's like drink change, can. Change your mind. Netflix now. <laughs> and chill. Drink can. Watch some Amazon shit and chill. It's, it's like it, it's cool because it don't really like. You know, like it don't disrupt your fade. You know what I mean? It yeah. don't disrupt like your your equilibrium. You know, I like some of these edible companies and shit like that. Like <sighs> you eat an edible or you drink something, you don't even like. There is no consistency from like this bottle to this. Bottle. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm glad you said that because I don't I don't smoke. I don't eat edibles. It's the vitamin water of cannabis infused. I'm, I'm around people that, that have <laughs> ate edibles before, and I'm wondering if like they got to be. A, it's not all the same because I've seen people hallucinate like they on LSD like on like Duh, I'm like is trip, this an edible yeah. or is this like nah, a different. mushroom? That's what I'm saying. It, what are they putting in these things? The, it's it's the you best comparison. I'll let you go. In the no, 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 no. I, I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know either. But I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do edibles, dog. I know some people. Um, <laughs> so they, it, it's you like heard the some roller, story, yeah, heard some stories. I've seen some stories. Uh, it's like the roller coaster that, that just keeps going up. Like sometimes, like in yes terms, the fade. You just you know you want to be here, and you know it's a nice come down. Yeah. And like sometimes with these edible experiences, it's like the roller coaster keeps going up, and I feel like the seatbelt just came off. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, for sure, bro. I, I've been uh, and I've been trying like you know like edibles, you know what I mean, just to like figure it out. But some of them shits be like <laughs> good, you know what they I mean? Like good. God damn, like. He's like, yo, these ain't no motherfucking gummy bears, dog. <laughs> these motherfuckers just sleep bears. Like, these motherfucking gummy bears coming, coming out the pack. <laughs> Standing up and shit. I'm telling you, they be good, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you got to be aware of that. But that's why I like can, because I, you know, I can drink and be having a fade. And I'm like, oh, this shit good. And I ain't going to be like... Climbing the walls and shit like that, yeah. thinking I'm yeah, about to be smoking. My, yeah. <laughs> so, so we we spoke to Al Harrington, we spoke to John Sally. Now you and the common denominator, all you guys play in the league, and all you guys are involved in the cannabis industry. Is there? I'm not involved like that. Okay. I'm not involved like them. Those okay. guys are like. More, I, yeah, I know it's a lot of NBA. Yeah, they players, more huh? experts. You know what I mean? They yeah. more the experts around it, and you know Al. Al and John, they've been one of two of the pioneers. I would say Al with Viola for what he's doing, you know, kind of pushing culture and just like, you know, lifting this heavy thing, you know, on the mm -hmm. shoulder uh, by employing us, you know, just doing all the things right. And Sally, you know, he's had his imprint in it from, you know, him being a vegan and looking at it and food and oils and things like that. Um, me, I'm just looking for the good, right opportunity. And then uh, I make content. So, you know, we like write weed movies and, you know, try and figure out podcasts and things like that. So that's really my approach mm. um, on an industry is like from a content perspective, how can we create the next movie? Like what's the next great cannabis movie? That's like a, how high in 2021. No, they did. Right. They, they bust it. They made how high too. Well, they, they made how high, high too, but. DC, you know, no, like you gotta DC. make, you gotta make yeah. how high, like yeah, you can't, do you know, you like you want, we want to make like original shit yeah. that feels like you know it's authentic for this era. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, you know, remixing and shit is cool, but it ain't cool when you got a lot of uh, dope motherfuckers out here yeah. that's writing shit. You know what yeah, I mean? That's right hungry. So we try and look at it from that perspective too. How you feel about the the lead, like? The league, the power structure in the league, I feel like the NBA is completely different than the NFL where the players have a lot more power. And, and like, and even now, like, these contracts are starting to change. Like, LeBron, he's doing, like, these shorter-term contracts. Mm -hmm. I noticed that a lot more players are doing that. Um, well, how do you feel about the power structure in the league between the players and the owner? You think it's, it's balanced, it's good? Or? Well, I think it's, uh, one, it's a great relationship. 
or uh, the workings between the union and the league. And then you see the players and their union and the union standing up for the, by the players. And then the league understanding, right, what's happening in the world and have their antennas up to understand where, you know, they kind of be in the middle. And so, you know, I always listen to Adam Silver and he says, you know, he treats it like a partnership. And when you look at the players, it is a partnership the way that they're approaching it, you know. And so they have every right to sign these one-year deals, two years deals. It's, it's, it, it's a player's league. It's their league. And you see the changing of the guards of different owners and more owners are coming in starting to understand that it's a player's league. And, you know, they're structuring the infrastructure of the organization to, like, build a player-friendly ecosystem because that's going to, you know, equate to championships and superstars, you know, coming to the team. So... I like the relationship. I like the fact that, you know, NBA guys, you know, especially LeBron and, and, and Kyrie, everybody, like people express themselves, right? And I think that is, they are the pioneers because they're the ones that we see the most. Hmm. You know what I mean? And, you know, I, I always tip my hat to them, whether they right or wrong. It's like they, they put themselves out there to be vulnerable you know what I mean? To make mistakes, but to also, you know, they doing it from a place where where it's complete. You know what I mean? And it's whole. And so, you know, I just kind of I, I, I agree with with the players just keep pushing the envelope. And I think it's a it's a testament to the league because the league is listening to the players. Right. They're not turning in deaf ear. Mm. So you obviously a content creator. Um, and you've told a few LA stories. You got the Crips and Bloods. You got mm -hmm. the Drew League. What's the next LA story that you want to tell? Because like I'm looking at the wall, I see Mount Westmore up here. Yeah, yeah. this is Mount LA. Westmore's here. This is, this is <laughs> LA, I, I, sure. I, I see. Well, we, we missing Kendrick and Dre, but I guess we can. Yeah, we got some more. We, we got, got some yeah, more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, won't, yeah, yeah. we got so, some more work together. What's, what's, <laughs> what's the next story you want to tell? Because I'm thinking. This this might not be a bad one. The, the the impact on the music from from a Dre to a Snoop to a Pac to a Nipsey. a game and and then Kendrick and Nip. Yeah. I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> nah, uh, I just directed my first documentary. I mean, uh, shit, my first feature film uh, on Dominoes. Mm. Pizza. Yeah, uh, Dominoes. The game. Not a game. The okay. game Dominoes, okay. not the pizza. Like uh, Boys in the Hood. Domino. Yeah. Domino, <laughs> domino. <laughs> So them type of dominoes. So it's like a comedy. Uh, it was my first time directing a feature film. So, you know, that comes out June 11th. Um, and then we got this studio. So we doing like our podcast. Uh, I think our next kind of documentary is on L.A. basketball. And just like the evolution of L.A. basketball. So we can drill in into like all the dope high schools and tell many docs. Um, yeah, but I'm just excited for this Domino movie to come out. I directed that. And then I feel like my next, you know, directorial movie is um, this movie that I want to do. It's like a basketball kind of hood movie, mm. like a he got game meets boys in the hood. Mm. And so, like, that's what I'm really focused on. Um, but, you know, like comedy is the shit that I kind of naturally been gravitating to. Or on the documentary side, just kind of serious shit. So I've been trying to play in different spaces. Um, but my next feature should be like uh, kind of like a hardcore drama around like this basketball, you know, something that kids in high school basketball players can relate to. So music is a passion of yours. I love music, man. Music. I love to DJ, make beats, all that. <laughs> so, is this something that you're going, I know obviously, do you have an album coming out? Bart Oatmeal got an album coming Bart, out. Bart Oatmeal got an album coming out. <laughs> Bart Oatmeal. <laughs> What's good, my G? <laughs> What's good, Bart Oatmeal got so many different is looks, this, is, this, is this something, you got production company, record label, you, or just more of a passion project where you just... Yeah, so, uh, I just start. I started producing because I was making this movie. And I was like, shit, well, we ain't got no money to like afford no real producers <laughs> <laughs> without me asking for favors. So I started producing, you know, and I started like 
bringing the homies in, producing for them. So we had put together like this cool ass soundtrack. Then Mike and Keys came in and, you know, they kind of like brought the professional, you know, uh -huh. and, and, and brought the quality of the sound, but just even in the movie. Um, and, you know, it was really like just a, like a startup, but the passion was always there from DJ. And like once I start learning how to make the beat and sample, it was just like, yo, all right, after I play basketball, I'm just gonna make me, you know, I wanna make music because I feel like just the energy in the studio is just creates so many ideas. And, you know, I love to write. So I'm just like constantly writing, constantly creating, you know, and whether I'm DJing or just making a beat or can't make a beat or can't write a song or can't, you know, write something, you know, uh, it still put me in like the same space that I feel like I am in on the court. Mm. I wanna ask you, Two questions. Well, one, a hip hop question. Who's your your top five LA rappers? Uh, Nip, Kendrick, Snoop, um, Dom Kennedy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Dark Horse in the race. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Game. I'm about to say. Okay. Yeah. That's five. That's five. That's five. That's five. No, no, no Ice Cube. Cube six. Kind of throw Cube in there. Six. Played a major part. Yeah, Cube six. I mean, yeah, I, I, I say Cube. Cube as like a, he would be number one, like as a storyteller. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, like yeah, he was a rapper, but like the whole NWA thing, like I was, I think I was a kid. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I was like a kid during that. And so like my, my Ice Cube was like, Bow down, West Side Connection. That's you know different. what I mean? Yeah. That that's different. a different Friday. That's, a different, that's him like and that. like, like Cube is like the motherfucker like people want to be. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Cube was like the dude like, damn, dog. Like, look how he did that. Yeah. You know, and, and how he flipped that. But, uh, you know, it's uh, when, when you're talking about like, you know, all those dudes who are, who are rap, who rap L.A., you know what I mean? It's like that's. That's the LA vibe. You no, know so what I mean? That's, that's a good list. That's yeah. my list. So, outside of Don, shout out to Don King. Uh, but outside of that, that would be my list. Yeah, I take Dom over over Ice Cube because, you know, Dom is gonna give you a tour of LA. Mm -hmm. So when you first move to LA, I always say, you know, you want to buy a Dom a Dom Kennedy album because he gonna show you all the fly shit. He gonna talk about just like what it is to be LA, be fly, and be like a real LA native. You feel what I'm saying? One one question that I had about negotiating your contract: How was it negotiating your contract with ownership as a as your own agent? Was it a, like a weird dynamic, or was it just easy? No, nah, so uh, so when I when I when I left my first agent, uh, Arn Tellum, then I hired a dude. Uh, I hired an agent and. I hired an agent just to like negotiate that contract. And so the way that the meeting went when he was negotiating with the GM was like, yo, you know, hey, I'm representing Barry. He was like, yeah, we want to do this. Then I put it on mute. I'd be like, yo, I'm going to tell him this. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how the hour long okay. conversation went. <laughs> and then, uh, funny enough, I wanted him to partner with. You know, one of, uh, one of my best friends and college teammates and be like, yo, take this young dude under your, your wing and then we'll start a big agency. And shit. Like LeBron did. Yeah, but uh, he wasn't he, he, he fucking with us. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I learned something about that, you know, just being like an older black dude is like, even if you don't feel like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to fuck with the next generation because we're going to hate you. Mm -hmm. And we gonna outdo it, and we gonna rock it out, and it just builds so much animosity. So he didn't fuck with my homie, and then it was just me and my homie Rico, mm -hmm. me and Todd, Rico, and we was like some real live entourage shit. So then the next contract, you know, we sat there like a team, and Todd, Todd handled, you know, Todd handled himself. And people used to always say like, "Man, why you got him? He's so young." And da 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 da. And I was like, "Man, I don't give a shit," because like. By the time I retire, like, he will be where you guys are. And he will have young dudes that believe in him. And, and like, the goal for me was, like, for us to do it so differently, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That, like, by the time he got to a point, 
where he had, you know, his maturity or hit his better status in the game, he would see all kind of different ways, you know, uh, to just be in in the industry but become a great agent. And then you look look at Rico Hines. He he working with uh, the Sacramento Kings, and he wanted to you know the lead uh, player development guys in the mm -hmm. league. You know. All right. So you said the top five rappers. I'm gonna switch it. I'm gonna go top five L.A. born ball players. L.A. born ball players. Yeah. That you guys know? No, nah, just anybody. Your your favorite, your favorite, Raymond Lewis. I heard of him before. He's a street. street we legend. got a documentary coming out on Raymond Lewis. He's the guy jumping over cars and all that. Nah, that's Hook Mitchell. That's oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Iverson me Steph Curry. Okay. He, he never made it to college. He though. made it to college. He led the uh, college with like he averaged forty three points. What school did he go to? Went to Cal State LA. Shot fifty nine percent from the field. Wow. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> hey, bro. That's, that's like center. <laughs> bro, yeah, like point guard. He was like Steph Curry, me, Iverson. He was, uh, he's like this figure everybody in LA chase. You yeah. know what I mean? Like our Earl Manigold okay. or like how to be. Kirk, Kiwi Kirkland. Yeah, kind of, yeah, like, but for us, it's like, you know, all our, all our damage is done in high school, kind of like what you do in the gym. There's no street <laughs> basketball out here, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Ain't no street basketball. Like, you got drive-bys and all that. Ain't nobody playing outside. <laughs> yeah, it don't make sense. But you got to, like, earn your stripes. And Raymond Lewis went all the way to the league, got blackballed. Mm. So this story is about a dude who, you know, had this east side mentality, but also was so great that he did, he knew his value. And so at the time where the league, you know, was not really respecting that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You just see, like, this guy love for the game, but like constantly getting knocked down. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Raymond Lewis, number one. John Williams, uh, number two. John, like John Williams who played for the Cavs? Different John nah, Williams. Nah, John Williams played for Washington Wizards. Okay. Yeah, they, uh, so he was like, you know, like all these dudes are like huge figures. Uh, but it, I mean, it's so many dudes from LA, bro. Like if I start, if I do this shit on this show, yeah. like, yo, how you leave me out? I'm out of death threats. You know what I mean? So the, like it's a lot of dudes I didn't see. Yeah, and kind of lived under like you know you live under this Raymond Lewis. You got Marcus Marcus Johnson. You got uh, uh, you got Dwayne Poli. Uh, you know you got dudes like Gumby, right? You got Stace Bozeman. You know Paul. Paul, uh, you know, if I were to name people that y'all would know, it would probably be like Paul. Paul George? Paul Pierce. Oh, Paul, Paul Pierce. Yeah, yeah. Englewood. Yeah, he went to Englewood. Englewood, yeah, yeah. Paul George Obviously, from out here, too. Yeah, Englewood, Englewood. Prince, Kenny Bruner, I would say. Um, Russell, Russell Wellsbrook. In high school or now? Like, yeah, he wasn't the, the man in high school. Guys that yeah. come out huh? of LA? He wasn't. You know, like, that's Russ grew. James. Yeah. yeah, that's Russ. I, I mean, those are. He wasn't the man in high school? Guys. At 11, 12. It took but you have Darrell Wright. He went pro out of high school. The first, Darrell you know Wright. what I mean. The first dude out of LA to go pro out of high school. Yeah. Tyson so Chandler. You go, oh, Tyson Chandler. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I'm a Bulls fan. Compton. Yeah. Went to Dominguez. Went to Dominguez. What's the best high school? We was having this conversation. We like we. You can't say. You can't say. All right, don't say. Don't say. Don't say. Don't say. Don't say. You can't even say that because you can say Dominguez. You can say Crenshaw. You can say Westchester. Everybody kind of like had they runs. Fremont. You you know. Um, Westchester, I heard Westchester. We didn't say Fairfax, though. Fairfax, Fairfax got an argument. Like, if you do all-time teams, like, do this. And they, it, like, L.A. got a lot of basketball players, a lot of dope basketball players. Dudes who played in the league that you wouldn't even think played in L.A. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think now, you know, currently, there's about 50, 60 guys in the league yeah. from L.A. The most. I yeah. think L.A. has the most. Yeah. That's why I said the New York-L.A. thing is not a competition right now. Nah. Professionally, it's not. No. Nah. It's not close. Nah. We got, who we got? We got Kimba. Took a hit. You took a hit. <laughs> Nah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's been a rough couple of days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We it's get been a rough it. couple of days. We was the point guard city. Oh, we no point guard. That's not even a question. Yeah, we the point guard city. Know. And then now we got. I mean, we got Cuba. So we should be out there. Uh, yeah, I mean, y'all got. Hey, man, I do not fight that. Y'all <laughs> are point guard city. LA, LA got some smoke too, though. Point guards. We got Sham guard. We got Skip. 
That's Mark, like, Mark Jackson. Mark Jackson, Ross Strickland. Ross Strickland. Kenny Anderson. Kenny Tiny Anderson, Archibald. Kenny Smith. Yeah. Yeah. Nostalgic. Very nostalgic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, we'll take that. We'll any, take that. any, any. <laughs> so what's, 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 what's next for you? Any, any other ventures that we didn't talk about that you, that you're working on? That you select, man. Sports, lifestyle, and culture. So, uh, you know, just building out, you know, what I would call a platform for the culture, for publishers, creators, uh, and people who want to create their ideas, you know what I mean, in the premium content. And yeah. Whether it's short form digital premium, whether it's documentaries, you know, uh, we've been looking at the Patreons, Vimeos, and all these all all these platforms and saying like why why can't, you know, the culture kind of have its own platform. Mm-hmm. You know, why, you know, why shouldn't this be against a paywall where people can support Right, you guys are incredible content makers and creators, and have a great you. show. Thank you. It's like where where can we all as a community, right, uh, as an ecosystem, back ourselves into a corner and say, hey, we have all the tools we need, and we can collaborate and you know create great content. Yeah. So that's what Slick is. Slick, yeah. So it's creator app, uh, have a NFT marketplace. Um, and then we'll have distribution, like subscription distribution for publishers and creators. So that's for any type of creator. To, and that's for d- a d- selective few. <laughs> okay. like, I think more about, <laughs> think about it as being a production company or creator and having like, your, like getting approved. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay, okay. Like so you just can't, store. anybody just can't run in and just be a no, part of it. You can't just run in and just be okay. like, oh, I'm going to start creating a whole bunch of shit. Like, <laughs> nah, <laughs> then we good. Well, not on the platform. Like, you would probably go get the tools yeah. and like do that. But, so, you know, we, we, we really want to do a good job of like building out a library, right? Uh, finding all the hidden gems and treasures and growing that way. Mm-hmm. And then giving talent access to like a library and tools and shit like that to work with. You know, so I, I want to thank you before we, we, we wrap. I want to thank you um, because March 31st, 2019, obviously we lost Nip. And uh, I went to work the next day. I never forget it was a Sunday. I went to work the next day. People really didn't understand it. They didn't really understand what he meant. And then I just watched you on TNT speak about what he meant to LA mm-hmm. and what he meant to the community. And that became the thing I sent out. I said, watch this. That's what he That's meant dope. to all of us. So I want to thank you for that, that yeah. moment. Yeah. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, Nip, I think Nip is like, it's just like, man, it's so, it's like, it was like, you know, like as a kid, you see like Tupac and the fact that Tupac had, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And then like, you like, shit, dude, like, if, like, there'll never be another mm-hmm. something like that, yeah. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then like, you actually like, you living with this dude you know what i mean like you living in this world yeah. and it's like well it ain't tupac you know what i mean this right, right. ain't tupac but like ah damn this one like this motherfucker fill up a whole gym yeah. you know what i mean it's like he fill up a, like he 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 was he was he was filled with so much like this guy has so much to get bro he was so sharp right and when you start you talk about consistency Right, you talk about consistency. It's like the shit that he was saying from when he started. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? To like the last thing he said was always consistent about like I'm I'm taking this shit to a to a whole nother level of like understanding and knowledge and you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so it's like this dude was just always dropping gifts and it's like to live with that to live in the city with that presence to run up on him, you know what I mean? To be able to like, you know, like to to say you had a relationship with somebody who was just constantly like, it was like giving you something, you know what I mean? And like for, for and, and people don't really know, like to be where he from in LA, mm. you know what I mean? And for everybody in the city to fuck with him like that, yeah. man, that is, so a that's lot. power in itself, yeah. right? Because he did, he he fucked with people for who they were. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, 
he was able to transcend a lot of different layers that people would try to stereotype him in. You know what I mean? And I think that's why his legacy is going to continue to live. Right, right, right. Right? Because it's like, you know, he is the rose that grew from concrete. You mm-hmm. feel what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, we was huge fans. And it was, uh, we went to his show in New York. Um, that was the last show he did in New York. And we went, and it was just a dope moment for us to see mm-hmm. that. You know what I'm saying? To see, because I never do concerts. I, he's a concert guy. Yeah. I never do yeah. concerts. As soon as he said he's coming to New York, yeah. I bought six that, tickets. Then I called people. I got yeah. six tickets. That's yeah, coming. Good. Who's coming with me? <laughs> you know what I'm nah, saying? Because the victory, like, like me, like I look more into an artist, and you can just tell, like, he. He, he struck me as somebody deeper than just a rapper. Like, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, I just listen to their music, but I liked his interviews more than his music. Like, you know right. what I'm saying? It's like he just, he gave right. me something where it was like, so yeah, kudos to you for, for doing that because that was nah, dope. Shout out that was Nip, dope. Man, sure, man. Love Nip. But B. Diddy, bro, we appreciate you, brother. B. Diddy, run the city. Yeah, yeah, we just man. went through a whole mayoral uh, drive by. <laughs> that's a fact. That's a fact. Courtesy of D Diddy. That's that was, a fact. That was man. Thank you for joining Appreciate us. Appreciate y'all, man. One request: we gotta do one jump shot before we leave. Oh, and then now, yeah, let's yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. All right, all right. See, I got the roller skates. So <laughs> we gonna get there fast. You know, we keeping it all the way funky. That's a fact, man. Thank you, Troy. Housekeeper, you want to end it? Yeah, yeah. Shout out to everybody on Patreon.com. Y'all know that's our proud to pay program. Obviously, in honor of Nip. Um, and everybody that is there, thank you for joining. Top tier members, tier five, you have access to EYL University, the number one school for business education in the world. That means the entire planet. Don't play around. Reward yourself. So shout out to all the earners that are there, over 8,000 of y'all executing on the information. We appreciate y'all. Shout out to everybody that is supporting the merch, the merch team, and the whole EYL staff, man. There's no you without us. We so. got to look into the slick situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on, yeah, guys. For sure, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm slick. I had slick in my notes. Come to death row. Come to death row. death row. Thank you guys for rocking with us. We'll see you next week. Peace. Peace. My graduates from my school being Forbes. Bag drop. Bag drop. <laughs> a mic drop. Bag drop. Bag drop. <laughs>